Hey, what's up everybody? Adobe Masters here. And today I'm gonna to be showing you a new feature in Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2018, and that is gonna be the responsive elements. So before this, whenever we created an element, the animation and the timings were all locked, meaning that if I cut the video down short, it would cut the animation off. So maybe if, for example, this text coming in, it would cut it off right here, and then you just have it disappear. The animation wouldn't finish. With responsive elements, however, what we can do is we can set the responsiveness of these elements and then we can adjust things like time or position and it'll stay relatively the same. So for example, we have this animation right here. Really simple title animation, opacity coming in and then the position moving in. However, we can stretch this out really long and you'll see the animation gets longer or we can bring this in really, really short and you'll see the animation gets really short like so. So what we have is the ability to adjust the time of this and have the animation still preserved. And that's a really, really neat feature to be able to add because, you know, we don't always want an, an animation that's exactly X number of seconds. We don't want to have to rebuild it if we just want to remove one second or add one second to it. So this allows us to save, you know, save us a lot of time where we can just make little adjustments and it'll fix things for us. The other thing that um, responsive animations allow us to do is they allow us to lock the animation into a certain part of the scene. So what that means is we have right now a 1080p sequence right here. But what happens if we wanted to like make it into an Instagram video or something? To do that, we would have to change it to a 1080 by 1080, a square. Um, instead of 16 by 9, we would make it 1 by 1, which is square. So normally, if you've built all of your stuff using this 1080p model, when it makes it a square, it's gonna cut off this end and it's gonna cut off this end over here and that's gonna make this cut off. But when we make it responsive, click OK, you're gonna see that it brings it in just like so. So now it's reacting just like it was 16 by nine, but it adjusts everything and makes it fit whatever dimensions we give it. And again, this saves us a lot of time, mainly because we only have to design one animation and the other you know, idea is if we put in a bunch of this stuff, we could create two different videos, a 16 by nine and a one by one video, just with a click of a button, actually just changing up the sequence settings. And we don't have to do anything else because everything's gonna be preserved for us. So that is responsive design. So now let's get started on how we actually do that. Let's go ahead and reverse this back to a 16 by nine and delete our title sequence out of here. So now we just have a blank, um, you know, blank sequence right here. What we wanna do is we wanna create some text. So we're going to go up here to the type tool and we are going to just click or drag to make a text box. I'm going to click so it makes the text box for me. And you know, we can make a new text design. Sure. That'll be what our text is. And so now we can give it, you know, some sort of animation. I did an opacity. We could do like a, let's do a scale. So we can scale it down. Um, let's go ahead and make this an animation. So we're going to start it off at a zero and then we're going to move forward maybe to, uh, let's go three seconds, and let's bring it up to 100. So now you'll see that it just has this simple scale up effect. Nothing fancy, sort of cheesy, but it's an effect that we created. And you know, we'd spend a lot more time on something like this, but we created this effect now. And now let's say that we wanted to make this a two second or one second effect. So let's go ahead and bring this back down to one second. And you'll see that it comes up and then it just cuts off. And that's not what we wanna do. So what we wanna do is we want to attach the responsiveness to it. So what we do is we go up here to the graphics panel or just open up the essential graphics or so the graphics workspace or just open up the essential graphics panel over here. And then you'll see that once we click on this, there's nothing, once we click on it, it'll come up. And we don't wanna have the text selected. Um, that's for positional responsiveness and we'll talk about that later. But what we want is to have nothing selected. And when we have nothing selected, we're gonna have something called the responsive design time. So what we have here is the intro duration and the outro duration. So these are the two things that it's going to um, basically work off of on its responsiveness. This is what we wanna preserve in the beginning and what we wanna preserve in the outro. So what we wanna do is we wanna to get to the point where the, the effect completes. So like right here, uh, we can find the keyframe, the exact keyframe by jumping to it like so. And then we wanna make the intro duration as long as that. So in this situation, it's three seconds and three seconds. 303, just like so. And now you're gonna see this, this white on the, the left over here, this, this highlighted gray. And this means that it's going to always preserve this beginning sequence right here. Now, you'll notice that if I go really long, it doesn't stretch it out because we're saying that the intro is this long. We don't wanna stretch it any farther than this. However, if we shrink it, we want to shrink this down a little bit. We want to bring the time in and we wanna make sure that this, 
this um, intro is preserved. And so now you'll see the, the more I shrink it down, the faster the scale is going to get because it's preserving those keyframes. Now you'll notice that there's a bit at the end here where it just cuts off. It gets it completes the animation, but it cuts off. So what we want to do is we also want to preserve some of the back end as well, some of that blank space. So maybe we want to give it the exact same duration here on the end. So we need to make it big so we can do this. Let's make it like 303 on the back end as well. And what it's going to do is it preserves now the back end as well. So if we shrink it down, you'll see that there's this little lapse, but it also gives us three seconds of the animation being there no matter what. Or not three seconds, it's going to scale it to how big it is. But it's going to still give us some of that back time as well. And now we can make this really any size that we want, and it's going to work pretty well. And you'll see that the, if we get really, really short, it'll start breaking, but that's kind of because it becomes a new animation. If you go from like three seconds down to 14 frames, it just it has no information to try to preserve that. So this is more for sort of minor adjustments, but um, you can still make some pretty big changes here. So that is how you make it responsive on the time. Now let's make it responsive on the position. So to make it responsive on the position, we want to click on our element right here, go up to Essential Graphics, and then click on our element that we want to preserve. So in this situation, it's going to be the text. And right down here, we have responsive design and position. And we can we want to pin it to the video frame, which is this right here. And what, we, what these are is how do we want to pin it. If we do it in the center, we want to pin it to the center. We want to pin it to the bottom, the left, the top, the right. In this situation, what we want to do is we want to pin it to what's closest. So you can see this is in the bottom left. So we want to pin it to the bottom and to the left over here. And this is going to make it responsive by looking at both this and this edge down here. And it's going to adjust it according to these edges. We don't want to make it these other two because then it'll be adjusting off these two edges, and that's not where the effect is. So if we make a big change on the right side, it'll change this, and that doesn't make a lot of sense because, like I said, this is an effect that's coming off the left end and has a height on the bottom end. So we want to find what the effect would be manipulated by, and that is this left end and this bottom end. And if it doesn't work out, go ahead and try some of these different ones, and one of those should work out. We just have to kind of really think about how we want to pin it. But once we have these two selected, all we have to do is then go up to Sequence. We'll make sure we have the Sequence selected. Go to Sequence, Sequence Settings. And we can put anything in here that we want. We could put 900 down here. Uh, make it like a really sort of weird dimension, a 5 by 6. And then it's going to say the previews are going to be undone. But you see that it adjusted based on this left and this bottom. So it still preserved basically the height off the bottom because only the left and the right shrunk. But because the left shrunk so much, it preserves that spacing between the left over here that it was sort of similar. Let me, you can see that the spacing over here, it's preserving that spacing and then shrinking it just a little bit because the composition shrinks so much. But it preserves that space and now the effect is still here and it's still working out just fine. We still have this, um, it's still completely visible. It hasn't been cut off or anything like that. And that means that we get to just basically not have to do anything and have this effect work. And that is basically it on the responsive uh, designs for these new elements. It gives you just a couple of different buttons that you can press and sliders that you can grab, but you're able to create these elements that'll respond to a whole bunch of different resolutions and a whole bunch of different time signatures. And that's really important, especially with so many different like devices that you can view on and different places that you want to put a video. You can just create a couple of effects, adjust a few things, and now instead of having to recreate for every single new instance, you just get to basically click a couple buttons and it all is done for you. That is going to be it on this tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and them in the comment section below or on our tutorial or on our website at adobemasters.net. If you want to see more videos similar to this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I make a video every other day on Adobe-related products. And until next time, guys, see ya.